Hi everybody, it's Phil Ralston from Sunday's 930 service. I am coming to you from downtown Seattle. Check this skyline out. Isn't that incredible? What a great town this is. I'm going to meet somebody from St. Baldrick's here. And look at that. Oh my gosh, it's so cool. And we're very close to the water. So I hope you all have a great service with Pastor Dave and Pastor Diane. This is only a two and a half hour flight. See ya. Thank you, Phil. Welcome to worship at Christ the Servant from our living room to yours. We're so honored you have chosen to worship with us in this way today. So let's turn up the volume and let's get started. Woke up in the dark, rubbing slumber from my eyes. Start the day not knowing what's to come. Drag some fingers through my hair, I've got breakfast on my mind. Walking past the window, look out to the sky. The heavens declare the glory of God. The sky proclaims its Maker's handiwork. Night imparts its knowledge before it Tell anew until it is through. No words or language, voices not heard, gone out into all the world. The message shines brightly as the sun this day life has begun the heavens declare the glory of god the sky proclaims its makers and night imparts its for it is no more. Day begins a tale anew until it is through. Light is pushing back the dark, spreading all about. Dawning day begins again like every day before. Sky growing with glowing colors quickly shining bright. Golden rays and newly rising sun shout out. The heavens declare the glory. Sky proclaims its makers and Night imparts its knowledge before it is no more. Day begins the tale anew until it is through. The heavens declare. Sky proclaims its makers and Night imparts its knowledge before it is no more. Day begins a tale anew until it is through.
the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. We pray together. Dear Father, I ask you to give me strength to live this day as you would have me live it. Guide me in shining with the light of Jesus Christ in my words and actions. Fill me with your spirit so that I may be for others an instrument of hope, peace, and love. Use me to bring joy to others so that they may understand the life you desire for all your children. Amen. God hears your prayer and fills you with the power to live today, tomorrow, and every day, enjoying new and abundant life. Live in newness of life. Amen. Amen. of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you.
have received the message that Kylie is settled in at seminary in Chicago, LSTC, Lutheran School of Theology at Chicago. And so we're very pleased to see that she's making that transition. Mm -hmm. She will continue to be making transitions when mm -hmm. uh, courses begin soon. Mm -hmm. We want to remind you that uh, we do have Kylie's CD available in the church office as well as online at Amazon and, and iTunes, Apple Music, all those online places. All you got to do is you just type in Hymns of Faith, Kylie, and uh, like it is down here, and you'll get taken right to it. So beautiful music, and it will go to uh, help Kylie with her scholarship fund. Last week, we had the video from our live in-person vacation Bible school, but I think we need to show you some of the still photos, mm. which are also excellent, of our vacation Bible school. Our Old Testament reading is from 1 Kings chapter 19, verse 4 through 8. Elijah went on a day's journey into the wilderness and came and sat down under a solitary broom tree. He asked that he might die. It is enough now, O Lord, take away my life, for I am no better than my ancestors. Then he lay down under the broom tree and fell asleep. Suddenly an angel touched him and said to him, Get up and eat. He looked, and there at his head was a cake baked on hot stones and a jar of water. He ate and drank and lay down again. The angel of the Lord came a second time, touched him and said, Get up and eat, otherwise the journey will be too much for you. He got up and ate and drank then he went in the strength of that food 40 days and 40 nights to Horeb, the Mount of God. Well, we have a bread reference. That's kind of the requirement as we continue in the gospel reading from John chapter 6 regarding Jesus, miracle bread, bread of life. Jesus is the living bread from heaven. So the tie-in for the Old Testament each time is a story, one of the stories, which there are many, that has something to do with bread. In this case, it calls it a cake. But I think it's not, not cake the way we would think of it, more like a kind of a small, like a muffin, something really small, hand, hand size, handheld size kind of thing. But he's on the run. He got in a great victory. God gave him a great victory over prophets of a false god. However, because the queen at the time relied on those prophets, she wants to kill Elijah. So Elijah is on the run for his life. And he's so despondent, he, he doesn't, he just says, he's ready to give up. He just wants to lay down and die. Just let me lay down and die here, Lord. But God's not giving up on Elijah. Well, the queen she's, he's running away from is named Jezebel. Jezebel. You've heard that name before. Um, this, this is similar to last week's scripture reading, too, because there was bread, mm -hmm. manna from heaven. Mm -hmm. But the, the people were going where God had directed them. Yeah. God gave them a journey to go on. Right. And here, e Elijah also is on a journey God is directing mm -hmm. Elijah and it, it gets hard mm. it, it for for last week for this week the journey can be very difficult and last week the people complained mm -hmm. well this week 
Elijah, That's you Elijah. might you might say he 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 qualifies as what do you call it a drama queen mm, because pity party. he doesn't just complain he says Lord kill me now mm -hmm. just kill me now other people are after me to kill me but why didn't you just do it mm -hmm. you know big drama but I think in both cases God says I I haven't forsaken you mm -hmm. yes it is hard yeah and keep going. Mm -hmm keep going and God says I will provide yeah. and you know I also think about this as God provided bread mm -hmm. bread not every kind of food you desire mm. but bread to keep going it's enough to sustain you and sometimes our lives get very hard mm -hmm. and sometimes we wish we could just stop we, have, we wish everything would stop. Yeah. You know, I'm just so tired of this. I don't want to do it anymore. And God says, keep going. Mm -hmm. Keep going. Our psalm is Psalm 34, verse 1 through 8. I will bless the Lord at all times. The praise of God shall ever be in my mouth. I will glory in the Lord. Let the lowly hear and rejoice. Proclaim with me the greatness of the Lord. Let us exalt God's name together. I sought the Lord who answered me and delivered me from all my terrors. Look upon the Lord and be radiant, and let not your faces be ashamed. I called in my affliction, and the Lord heard me and saved me from all my troubles. The angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear the Lord and delivers them. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Happy are they who take refuge in God. Well, the food reference this time, if we're going to see that, um, at least in the Old Testament, the psalm, we tend to have a, a food reference. It's more, much more broad this time, just a, not a specific food like cake of water, cake of bread, but it is taste and see that the Lord is good. And... That reminds me that, you know, we, we are so blessed and we have a pick of so many kinds of food. Anything we might actually desire. But in those times, in the Bible times, a feast, a banquet, especially for the common person, was exceedingly rare. But when it could happen, and in this case, it's, it's the uh, occasion where someone has been delivered, someone has been healed or rescued by God. And so because of that, there's such joy and wanting to celebrate and thank God. It's like, come with me. Come on. We're going to make a banquet to celebrate and thank God. And God is good. And so taste and see that the Lord is good. Our second reading is from Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 25 through chapter 5, verse 2. So then putting away falsehood, let us speak the truth to our neighbors, for we are members of one another. Be angry, but do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your anger, and do not make room for the devil. Thieves must give up stealing, rather let them labor and work honestly with their own hands so as to have something to share with the needy. Let no evil talk come out of your mouths, but only what is useful for building up, as there is need, so that your words may give grace to those who hear. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God, with which you were marked with a seal for the day of redemption. Put away from you all bitterness and wrath and anger and wrangling and slander together with all malice. And be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another as God in Christ has forgiven you. Therefore be imitators of God as beloved children and live in love as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us, a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. 
Sometimes when you get to the latter part of some of the letters, that's where they get into what's called exhortation. But I'm also remembering that earlier in Ephesians, something that is being lifted up is that Jesus has broken down the division where there used to be two groups, those who were the Jews belonging to God and those who were not Jews, or sometimes they call Gentiles. And so in Christ, this is a new community, a new house, a new body of Christ. And yet this is still new territory. This is still a very young Christian community. And so sometimes we hear something, and to us we might kind of almost chuckle like, uh, thieves must give up stealing. It's like, oh, <laughs> that would have seemed perhaps so obvious. But they have to create the understanding of who are we in this new community of people who all belong to God through Christ. And so it gets down to some really um, very specific things. Well, some of them seem to be very basic, mm. like, like that one, mm -hmm. thieves must give up stealing. But then some of these rules for how we are to live can be very difficult. Mm -hmm. They sound easy, or they're, they're, they're basic, but mm -hmm. they're very difficult. Um, let no evil talk come out of your mouths. Well, okay, that's kind of a given, but then it follows up with, but only what is useful for building up. Mm -hmm. And so you, you have to ask yourself, in your conversation, is your conversation useful for building up mm -hmm. others? Or are you using your conversation to get your, your way. way across, mm -hmm. to win your conversation, to convince someone mm -hmm. else to your side of things? Only what is useful for building up. That, that can be very difficult mm -hmm. because that means we have to let go of our need mm -hmm. to grasp for things, our need to fight for our own rights, our need to be correct, our, to be right, mm -hmm. to convince other people. And, and that is an overwhelming need, I think, mm -hmm. we, we have. And so it does take work to say, I, I will build up. Gospel reading is in John chapter 6, verse 35 and 41 through 51. Jesus said to the crowd, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. Then the Jews began to complain about him because he said, I am the bread that came down from heaven. They were saying, is not this Jesus, the son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know? How can he now say, I have come down from heaven? Jesus answered them, Do not complain among yourselves. No one can come to me unless drawn by the Father who sent me. And I will raise that person up on the last day. It is written in the prophets and they shall be taught by God. Everyone who has heard and learned from the Father comes to me. Not that anyone has seen the Father except the one who is from God. He has seen the Father. Very truly, I tell you, whoever believes has eternal life. I am the bread of life. Your ancestors ate the manna in the wilderness, and they died. This is the bread that comes down from heaven, so that one may eat of it and not die. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats of this bread will live forever, and the bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh." 
as we are continuing through this uh, big discourse, this big uh, back and forth about first the miracle of bread and then Jesus making that, uh, we heard it at the end of last week and now at the beginning of this week, that very important statement, I am the bread of life. Um, in the Gospel of John, uh, John likes to include certain moments as we heard when Jesus was walking across the water, catching up with the disciples, and he, the disciples are afraid, but Jesus says to them, I am, and that's saying the name of God, Jesus, I am, Jesus is God. But then other times in the Gospel of John, the I am statement has, it refers to something in, a, in addition. And he, this is the first occasion of that kind of I am followed by fill in the blank, right? And in here, in the first statement is, I am the bread of life. And I, I think that is important that even though we hear other things like I am the light of the world, I am the good shepherd, uh, I can't think of all of them off the top of my head, but that the very first one given to us is I am the bread of life. And I know we've, we've talked about you know, the, how essential bread is, how daily bread is. You know, we say, give us this day our daily bread, sustaining each and every day. But as we continue in here, I think we are getting also to learn, this is John's way of talking about Holy Communion or Eucharist and helping grow this understanding and this connection that Jesus is, his body is the bread. He is the very source of this. But what's different in John's gospel, and I have to admit, my, my brain is still figuring this one out. In John's gospel, this bread of life is in life. The other gospels, it's at the Last Supper, right? It's at, just at the time where he is going to give up his life on the cross. But in John's gospel, it's in the thick, the very thick of Jesus' ministry. It's actually throughout. It's ongoing. It's not just, not the cross is pivotal. Don't, don't get me wrong. The cross does make all the difference. But it's also saying Jesus is the bread of life each and every moment. He is offering us that gift each and every moment throughout our lives each day. Now, again, we get the complaining thing, right? There is, <laughs> maybe that's an ongoing uh, complain, complain, complain. Uh, the Jews, it's not just all Jews though. I, you know, that's, that would be a misunderstanding. It's really Jewish leaders, those who had power. They're the ones that would challenge Jesus, question Jesus. And Jesus is trying to say, can you open your eyes? Can you understand that God can do something in a new way? Something that has something similar to before, something you have connection with, but yet in a whole nother level. And it reminds me a little bit of the story of the woman at the well, too. It's kind of, kind of like that, too. The woman had said, oh, once Jesus lets her know that, you know, this, he's the living water, right? Then she says, oh, well, give me some. This is great. I don't have to keep running back to the well. And the people, when they encounter Jesus and he has fed them, and he's starting to tell them the real bread, right, the real meaningful thing that sustains you even more than actual you know, put in your mouth physical eat bread is Jesus himself. That's the real, true life. But everybody still hears bread all the time. Access? Sounds good to me. It takes a while to get to where Jesus was trying to lead them and trying to teach them. But I find this, this gospel has some reassurance in it that that God is the one who draws us to Jesus. It's not just, I have to figure it out. It's a good news because the reassurance is God is helping bring us to that place of really 
accepting Jesus, knowing Jesus, believing in Jesus. And um, when we were doing one of the songs for Vacation Bible School, there's the word believe, and it looks to me the way they did the motion, the way I interpret it was, you know, you point your head, you know something, right? That's easy enough to figure out. But then it was point your head and then put your hands together. I felt like, like you know something strongly, that that was trying to, it's not, yeah, you know something, but n you know something. And it involves more of you than just something, a fact to recite. It, it, it is part of you. It becomes part of your life. And so believing in Jesus is a relationship that grows and builds and continues. And he is the one that feeds us. I believe in God the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. 
The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. in speaking these words. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. We pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The body of Christ given for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. The body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Go in peace, serve the Lord. Stay in peace, serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. And you'll see us here next week. <laughs>